So I think I've given in. Let's go. Okay. In 1973, the Museum of the Rockies acquired the beautiful blue Morning Glory, an eight-passenger touring stagecoach from the Manita Yellowstone fleet. It was donated by Frank Grant, Alice and Margaret Grant of the Madison Fork Ranch, West Yellowstone, Montana. Now, by accepting this and all donations, the museum takes the responsibility to protect, preserve, and provide access to them in perpetuity, like forever. And the Morning Glory is a part of the story of tourism in Yellowstone National Park. Now, from the beginning, Yellowstone was the place to see. Think Disney World. By the 1880s, many tourists took railroads from all over the nation to railheads at various points in Idaho and Montana, because the train didn't go to the park, and then stagecoaches ferried people into the park. In, 19, in 1898, F.J. Haynes, the photographer, and William Humphrey received a 10-year lease from the Interior Department to operate the Manida and Yellowstone stage line. Everyone called it the red line because of the carmine red color of the stagecoaches. M.Y. ordered 19 Concord coaches. After all, they were the kind that the Wells Fargo Company used. They were said to provide a boat-like ride. I can't imagine this boat. The body of the coach was supported by two three-inch thick rawhide leather straps, and that was it. Now, this map shows the entire tour that the Red Line provided, from Manida on day one, around the Grand Loop of the Yellowstone Park, and ending on day six at the train station in Cinnabar. Various other touring options were also offered. So, the passengers left the train at Manida and spent the night there. After breakfast, about 8.30 a.m., they boarded an MY stage for the trip through the Centennial Valley. Each passenger was allowed 25 pounds of luggage. Now, notice the traveler's attire. This isn't a great picture, but it's the best we could get. Women were wearing white shirtweight dresses, long skirts and hats, men, white shirts, suits, vests, ties, and hats. And I'm wondering, 25 pounds for six to eight days? How do you keep the kids clean? I, they're wearing white, too. This was where lunch was from noon to one with a horse change. Horses were changed every 15 to 20 miles at relay stations. And you can see that the number of travelers increased in nine years. These tours were only offered from June 15th to September 15th, go figure, depending on the weather. The cost of a round trip between Manida and the West Yellowstone entrance was $12.50. That's about $450 bucks in today's currency. And that didn't include the trip through the park. So this wasn't cheap. The Red Rocks, the stagecoaches climbed the Red Rocks Pass at about 7,000 feet, came down along the south side of Henry's Lake. A relay station provided a new team of horses before travelers went over the Targhee Pass at about another 7,000 feet. And this picture was taken on the first day of summer a couple years ago. Okay, the 70-mile dusty or maybe muddy, gritty or maybe sloppy, ride ended here at Dwell's Grayling Inn on the Madison Fork Ranch, five miles from the park entrance. Dinner was served at 5.30, and the next morning the travelers entered Yellowstone Park, 70 miles, 8.30 to 5.30. The original red line consisted of 80 horses. Eventually, stables, barns, driver's quarters were located at eight different sites. They used about 132 coaches of five different sizes by 1915. This, the railroad opened a line to West Yellowstone in 1908, but the business for all stage lines was booming. This is a 1914 photo which captures a line of stages just waiting to get into the canyon area. That's a lot of horses. And that was a lot of tourists. The morning glory was most likely, she could have been used on the Manita trip, but most likely to be used in the park on shorter excursions like this. 
Now in 1916, after increasing problems between horses and automobiles, the park banned all horse-drawn vehicles, ending the stagecoach era. So then the Morning Glory was bought by the Madison Fork Ranch, repainted that pretty blue, and used on the ranch. In, 1920, in 2023, good grief, she was given a new life by stagecoach expert Rahai Johnson and more than three dozen generous donors. Because she is one of the most physically complete coaches from the MY line, she was a good candidate for conservation and restoration. First of all, the blue was carefully removed, revealing the original carmine paint, which was touched up only in worn spots. Now, there's a fine balance in deciding how to conserve an historical artifact. In this case, the wheels, floorboards, and seat backs showed wear and tear of use. They were left that way. The roof had to be repaired, surprisingly enough. Now, the boot, the canvas roof, and the fringe are historically accurate reproductions. They were either lost or destroyed over the many years of use. And every single step of this entire process was carefully recorded for future researchers. Because we're preserving, you know. A very important and amazing detail was that the original lettering, after all of that, was still intact. The Morning Glory and I say thank you to all the generous people who brought her back to life. Hey, come visit her at the Museum of the Rockies. <laughs>